Okay, hello, thanks for joining us. I'm Carol Perry. I'm the Interim Artistic Director of the Edward Hopper House Museum and Study Center. And I'm joined today by Terry Rosenberg and Barry Schwabsky, who are here to talk about Terry's current exhibition at the Edward Hopper House, entitled An Active Meditation on the Paintings of Edward Hopper. So I will briefly introduce them and then they can take it from there. Terry Rosenberg has exhibited his paintings, sculpture and drawings in the US and Europe in venues such as MoMA PS1, the Whitney Museum of American Art at Philip Morris, the Albright Knox Art Gallery, the Museum of Fine Arts Boston, the Sao Paulo Biennial, and he is included in the permanent collections of the Brooklyn Museum, the Smithsonian American Art Museum, Fine Arts Museums of San Francisco, the Walker Art Center and the Albertina. Barry Schwabsky is art critic for the nation and co-editor of the International Reviews of Art Forum. He has published several books on art criticism and poetry, including The Observer Effect on Contemporary Painting from Sternberg Press in 2019 and The Perpetual Guest, Art in the Unfinished Present from Verso in 2016. Okay, so that's the intro and um, Barry and Terry, welcome, and um, you can take it from here. Thank you. Thanks very much, Hello. Carol. Okay. Um, Terry, when we were uh, sort of emailing about this ahead of time, and I mentioned that uh, one of the topics I, I wanted to talk about was space and different ideas of space. And in your response, I noticed that you did something very interesting, which was to, uh, sort of shift space into time, uh, which I think in the end probably is uh, the more apt subject. And I hope we'll, we'll get to that, but I thought maybe we should just start uh, uh, out a little bit less abstractly and uh, find out something from you about um, how this project came about and how you actually went about working on these uh, drawings in an active response to the paintings of Edward Hopper. I was initially invited by Richard Kendall and Jill Devonyar, who were on the exhibition community at Hopper House. <clears throat> and um, they, uh, invited me to have an exhibition there and said that, um, by the way, it had to do with Hopper or his, his work or his biography or, you know, him in some way, shape or form. And um, I thought, well, I, I don't know, really, I was at a loss of how that would really play out or what that would look like. And this went on for a couple of years of discussions with Richard and with Jill and with uh, my partner, Claudia Alvarez, who was also invited to have an exhibition. And so we were all kind of talking about Hopper paintings at, in depth for a really long time. And uh, I really didn't have any ideas about, I, the thing I clued in on most about Hopper paintings that was interesting to me, or most interesting was the ethereal psychological nature of how his paintings are so concrete and that they're all emotional and, and uh, um, they, uh, I, I'm not sure what the quote is about the 20th century, but they impacted the, uh, I wrote something down here, I have a quote from, uh, uh, his lonely, uneasy figures in everyday situations and common settings suggest spiritual crisis within the framework of realistic characters, real places, in the manner of typical of modernism. That's from uh, Gail Levin, 2007, in her biography about Hopper. Um, and what really uh, occurred to me was that the space between the figures and the architecture that he created was And I identify that because I work with figures in motion a lot and, and the skin is um, an important feature of that in terms of perception.
Now, so, in the, go ahead. Oh, um, no, that I, I wasn't going to continue there. I was just, uh, this is the uh, images of the exhibition at Hopper House. Now, something that these uh, drawings that you've made for this exhibition share in common with Hopper, but not, I think, with uh, most of your painting until now, is uh, precisely the fact that you, uh, to some degree, you represent the space in which the figures uh, are placed. Uh, that is in the the paintings that I know of yours, uh, this sort of spatial framework is is left undefined except for the uh, rectangle itself of the of the painting. Uh, so that this seems like a big uh, shift or uh, change for your work. It, it was. And um, I have made other paintings. Uh, in the past, in the 80s and 90s, um, that had other references other than figures in them. Um, but um, when I, I eventually, I after thinking about that space between Hopper's figures and the, and the geometric constructions he created for them, I um, I had a dream that I entered his paintings and was drawing that space at the same time as I was walking around through the painting. And uh, it's kind of a powerful and interesting dream. And it, um, it made me make some drawings related to the dream, the, you know, the next day when I woke up. So that sort of started the, the idea that sort of gave me an inroad to what I might do with this project. Um, I didn't know if it was ever going to happen. Then it hadn't happened sort of suddenly after you know four years of thinking about it. So the so I thought that I I attempted to do one thing and that was use the structure of Hopper paintings without um, using detail such as uh, portrait detail and clothing detail and 20th century furniture and architecture detail. And I would just enter the paintings as I would draw somebody moving around in a way, just draw in the structure and how that related to the figure and what the figure felt like and so forth. And my response to it. But in a sense, what's unusual is precisely the fact that you are bringing in here the idea of moving around, which in itself is uh, foreign to Hopper's aesthetic. You know, he presents everything as so still and uh, with a kind of a classical fixity that's, um, you know, that's very different. Yes, it, I, I wasn't particularly interested in re-rendering Hopper paintings or, um, you know, doing a redo of Hopper per se, or uh, I was just interested in that space and, and trying to move into that space and see what drawing it differently might produce. I had no real outcome in mind. I didn't have, uh, you know, I wasn't gonna like, tell my different stories or anything like that. I just simply responded to it as, as a drawing exercise in a way, mm -hmm. um, which I love to do different kinds of drawing exercises um, for various kinds of way to draw. So um, drawing to me is a very primary and regular pastime and a very vital one. Yeah, the um, the movement, I suppose, is a kind of perceptual movement rather than a, a full body movement or, or 
Would that be right? Yeah, I mean, the drawings are 28 by 40 inches uh, is the sheet size. And so, you know, I was moving my arm around sometimes and my hand and wrist and so forth, but I wasn't moving across the room or anything to that scale that I might do in certain paintings. So, um, but I was projecting myself into those spaces, if you will, while I was drawing them. And the drawing, the process of drawing them has a certain dynamic to it, as well as uh, the structure of the painting itself. So, you know, as marks start to unfold, they have relationship to other marks and other the other side of the room and the figure and how it sits in it in there and what that all feels like and what that all appears to be. And um, that was all kind of curious and interesting to me as uh, how that kind of moving around in Hopper's paintings, but not necessarily, you know, I wasn't, like I said, I wasn't trying to like reproduce Hopper's paintings. I was just trying to explore the ethereal nature of whatever that was in my maybe primitive way, I don't know. It was just sort of, it was an idea. And I thought, you know, it's as good as idea as any other kind of idea. Um, it might turn into something. And um, anyway, I, after I made four or five drawings, I thought, oh, this is kind of interesting in a way or something, something about it was, you know, made me keep making more. And then I explored different, you know, he made so many pictures with figures in them. Um, that was it, curious to me because compositionally variations and so forth and meaning of pictures that may have a different meaning than maybe he intended. And uh, so they, and you know, I approach things from my 21st century perspective. And um, so there was this, in terms of the space and time, it turned out that you know, these pictures that were made in mid 20th century are now kind of re what, whatever I've done to them, they're re, you know, defined in some other way. And maybe they, maybe they speak to this moment, maybe they don't, I don't know. That's, you know, to be determined, I guess. It seems to me that, uh, curious that to a great extent, you've you've made the figures less important in, in the drawings than they are in the paintings. And the reason I say that that's curious is because in a way uh, your paintings to me are kind of all figure, even though, even though it's, they're figures in motion. Uh, here uh, in the drawings, the, the motion seems to almost uh, dissolve the figure in many cases. Yeah. And um, I felt free to erase, especially in this case, um, erase some of the things that I put in that were Hopper's, you know, originally from Hopper's compositions and then maybe they were obliterated. And um, I'm not sure why that is per se. I was just trying to make pictures that were of interest to me. Mm -hmm. um, and another one of the things that you've changed a lot is, is color. I mean, on the one hand, Many of them are, are grisaille drawings that don't use color, but in the ones that do use color, you haven't, uh, I don't think, corresponded to uh, the choices that Hopper made. And in many cases, it seems to me that the color is much more um, uh, sensual, intense in your drawings than it is it with, with Hopper, where it's usually pretty kind of uh, sober, uh, 
in Palo? Yeah, I think the, it could be the 20th century has impacted, you know, the world of color. I'm not sure, but um, uh, like I said, I didn't want to reproduce his paintings and I chose to draw them because um, I really didn't want to enter into that world of painting. And uh, because it was just, well, his paintings are so fabulous that I didn't want to, you know, somehow get into, somehow I thought that getting into painting would just, you know, not really work somehow. I wanted to, to remain sort of diagrammatic and sketchy, if you will, more of an idea than sort of a, whatever else I was thinking about, it would turn into as a painting. It sounds like your, uh, your work here has been made as much out of resistance to Hopper as, to, as out of uh, attraction or as out of um, what you could possibly draw out of, out of him. Um, yeah, I, you know, when I'm drawing, I, I don't really take sides, if you will, or I try to stay open and um, kind of non-judgmental and act more like a channel of some, as a channel to explore that work of Hopper's as opposed to, you know, making a critique about his work per se or anything like that. Um, of course, I admire his work, but it, it's not exactly, you know, a simpatico thing for, for my work it, it, as far as artists that have, that I feel truly connected to and have um, impacted my work in a big way. Hopper was not on that list, I don't think, but I still find him interesting. And I find that the, the geometric configurations and spatial things that he made are really curious as to how they fit around those people and the whole psychology of Hopper in terms of what he does with those figures and makes them so inwardly uh, uh, restrained and, you know, psychologically turned inward and alone and all that stuff. That's interesting to me and that's interesting how he does that. Um, so it was that ethereal stuff that I, I was trying to potentially get at. All, all the stuff that's uh, the most intangible, in fact. Yeah. And, and drawing people moving is a pretty, you know, intangible project, if you will. Uh, it's those things that all those layers of things that happen when people are moving in different directions at high speed and and all that is you know really interesting to draw from for me those those paintings of people in motion uh really are and this i think maybe goes back to my first point about space and time uh are really a kind of palimpsest of time in other words uh, by uh, responding to successive movements and overlaying them, you create a, a, a sort of simultaneous image of something that occurred over, over some expanse of time. Um, would you say that in this case you were recording the expanse of time of your response to the, the Hopper paintings? Or, or how does the, the kind of play of time uh, work in these drawings compared to other works of yours? Um, <clears throat> I think in the Hopper drawings that I have produced here, um, yes, it's kind of a 
recording, if you will, of my time, um, my drawing time. And um, uh, it, it's perhaps different than, um, it's different than the recorded time or the Olympus uh, space time that you mentioned in the paintings in that um, there seems to be a, in the paintings, they're typically of one person or sometimes two people. Um, I haven't made any, you know, multiple people paintings that done that with drawings before. Um, and there tends to be a sort of a connective tissue, if you will, from one second to the next or one gesture to the next or uh, how color and layers and tones add up in time. And um, it, um, it's a different kind of a time than, than uh, a time that is like a, a, a time of uh, a working time of like labor time. You know, a lot of paintings are just made up of countless hours of labor. Mm -hmm. You don't really see the strokes and the movement and the touch factors and all that um, complex stuff that can happen in, uh, let's say, a Cy Twombly painting or a, or a Van Gogh painting or something like that. Um, and so the the paintings are, are I, I try to uh, be in the present time mm -hmm. while someone's moving. And so they're, you know, it live, each second kind of lives and dies and so does the image. And so that's interesting to me because it's, um, you know, it's an ethereal concept, if you will, but I, I guess there's different, um, different uh, uh, success in different paintings in, in terms of what one gets or one doesn't get. And uh, anyway. So I think you're saying that it's a, it's a subjective sense of time and not a, not a measured, objectively measurable sense of time, which is, I think, the one that we're used to in thinking about uh, working lives. Yeah, that, that's correct. It, I approach it totally subjective. And um, I could use a video recorder or a photograph or you know, a motion capture technology or something like that. But the reason I'm doing it by hand is that I can change frequencies and speeds and direction and things like that. Granted, it's a primitive you know, old school way of making a mark or making some kind of picture, but um, it's also feels like there's a heartbeat to it and there's a life force and things like that, that, um, you know, kind of speak of the human body, that which I'm drawing and that of my own and the, the connection between those two things. Uh, you know, two people, basically. You know, I'm painting two, there's two people involved in the, in the project. Even though we're doing different things, we're kind of connected in that moment for a minute. Well, it's a methodology, you call it uh, uh, old school and primitive, that methodology, and I'm willing to accept that it's old school, uh, but somehow it seems that maybe for that very reason, it's uh, the opposite of primitive. There's a sort of uh, sensitivity and responsiveness that can be uh, developed there uh, that I think tech te technological methods have yet to, um, to reach. Well, they, they say that inner space is the last frontier. I guess that's in your mind, right? 
in our minds. Yeah. So I believe in that, like things can still happen and um, imagination can be great and people can develop things. And I'm trying to develop this in terms of for whatever reasons I have, well, there's a bunch of reasons I'll, about um, drawing people moving. And so I kind of approached the Hopper paintings in a similar way, kind of, although it was a still, you know, the Hopper paintings were still images but um, so the motion became my own connection from uh, corners of the painting to the figure inside what I thought may be inside the figure or what the figure felt like to me or I was doing a lot of projecting. Uh -huh. So now that this Hopper series is complete, I take it, and you know it's it's up on the walls. You've had a chance to see it in a kind of uh, more objective way than you perhaps can see it in your studio. Um, wow, are you feeling that this is something that's going to be a kind of self-contained episode in your uh, artistic career or, or are you feeling that it has elements that will feed into other work? How, how is that looking? Um, I have a few ideas and um, I'm not sure how they're going to play out. Yeah. I, I thought of other artists that might be interesting to explore in a way. And somehow Vermeer and Rubens came up. Oh, wow. Yeah. The, well, those are two very different names. And of course, Vermeer was clearly a, um, a model of sorts for Hopper in many ways. Yeah. Uh, Rubens gets into a whole other territory altogether. All and maybe on the face of it seems a little bit more uh, sympathetic to your painterly approach. A lot of motion in Rubens' paintings. Exactly. A lot of dynamics. So yeah, we'll see what happens. Stay tuned. Okay, very good. I think we covered a lot and it was great to hear your insights, Barry, and, and more of your process, Terry. Uh, yeah, th thank you both very much. No, thank you. It's yeah. really a pleasure. So a reminder that this show is on view and want to review the images again. They're on the website at edwardhopperhouse.org. And um, thank you. We'll, we'll see you at the Hopper House. Thank you. Thanks. Take care. Bye.